What's up guys? Alexis Downey here with Icebreakers. November is here and so is Hockey Fights Cancer Month. Now normally teams would be hosting their own Hockey Fights Cancer game nights. However, this year things are being done a little bit differently. Canadian forward Brendan Gallagher created his own Cameo page. Cameo is a platform where you can request personalized messages to be sent to you directly from Gallagher. All the proceeds will be going towards cancer-related foundations. Last week, Alex Ovechkin told Russian Television International that he has no intentions of playing for any other team besides the Washington Capitals. Ovi has spent 15 seasons in the NHL, all of which with the Caps. His 13-year contract will expire at the end of next season. Now, the Caps have made a lot of off-season moves, including a new head coach. So how could that affect the team's chemistry? Well, I caught up with former pre- and post-game host on NBC Sports Washington and current the Capitol Building podcast host Rob Carlin to talk about the moves. I think the chemistry is okay because this core has been together for so long. It's Ovi and Backstrom and Carlson. It's weird not to say Holtby. I almost just did that out of <laughs> habit. Um, but so many of these guys have been together for so long and they've experienced so much together. And that's really, as I said, the core of this team. They're going to get a wake-up call from Peter Laviolette because he's going to come in and he is going to shake things up. He is going to demand perfection on a day-to-day -day basis, practice, games, and he has an amazing track record of getting that, especially in years one and two, then he seems to flame out after that. But I think, um, I think this team understands that their window is closing, and I think that they want to still do what they've already done once, which is win another Stanley Cup. And you did mention Braden Holtby, gone to the Canucks now. Henrik Lundqvist coming in, and he's expected to share goaltending duties. How do you think that adjustment will be for the team? Well, it's interesting because Lundqvist is, you know, obviously he's one of the greats of all time. He's a Hall of Famer. Um, and then he had to split time last year where really he was phased out with the Rangers who had two dynamic young Russian goalies. And so he did have to deal with that on a very large stage in New York. Um, and, you know, that sort of benching was very public. Um, so he, he's, he understands what that is. He's beyond that now, and he came here with the understanding that the Caps have a young phenom that they hope will one day carry them, you know, to 60 starts a season and a deep Stanley Cup playoff run. But make no mistake, Lundquist is here to try and win the job. He's going to mentor Samsonov. He's going to help him along the way. Everything we've heard is he's a great locker room guy, so he'll be a leader on a team that's already full of leaders. So Halloween wasn't too long ago. Give me your scariest guy or, say, dark horse on this roster. Well, scariest guy has got to be Tom Wilson if you're on the <laughs> ice, right? I mean, no one wants to go in the corner and feel the weight of that enormous body bearing down on you. <laughs> so he's, he's number one for scary because he also will just drop his gloves and knock you out cold, like it, no problem. But the funny thing is, so we all know about Ovi, right, and how big and physical and strong he is. I just did a, my latest Capital Building podcast, and I had Jeff Halpern on, former Cap, just won the Cup with, as an assistant for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And he, he told me a great story. He said when Ovi would get going up to speed, because he wears necklaces, players would hear his necklaces jingling as he got close, and they would – start to get ready for a massive hit. And I was like, you can hear that with 20,000 fans and everything going on. I was like, oh yeah, you could hear the chains coming and you just knew to look. So I guess Wilson would be my one. And the, I don't know if you can call Ovi a dark, dark horse in anything, but I guess he's number two because you can hear him coming. And speaking of Ovechkin, you know, this is something that's mentioned pretty frequently, but I want to hear your thoughts on Ovi reaching Gretzky's all-time goals record potentially. I mean, all these lost games is just such a killer. You know, I mean, he's between the, the lockout shortened season and now this shortened season that we just finished and whatever the shortened season is going to be next year, it's a lot of games he's lost out on. Um, I say this over and over to the point where, you know, the guys I've worked with over the years, like, I get it, I get it. But if you're ever going to doubt Alex Ovechkin, that's a you problem. That's not a him problem. He never buys into any of that because when we wrote him off when he had a 33-goal season a couple of years ago and his 
five on five goals plummeted. We were like, well, maybe this is the new normal. <laughs> then the dude just goes out and scores like 150 goals in three years. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's, there's father time and then there's Ovi time. <laughs> and Ovi time is different. It, the, the age is not catching up to him. So I hope he gives it a run because for exciting as everything that Ovi has done and accomplished, if he gets anywhere near Gretzky, the excitement will be off the charts and it will be a national story. And, uh, you know, I, I hope I'm still around to, to cover that because that will be a blast. Certainly would be a really exciting time for hockey fans in general. So one last question. What is your all-time favorite in-game Caps moment? If you can name one. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, the Stanley Cup. I mean, the, the Stanley Cup is obviously the highlight um, you know, I was with Alan May, who's one of the great tough guys, uh, certainly in Caps history. And those final seconds, remember that the, the game like delayed with like a second and a half to go or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And I had been standing on, you know, you get you, everyone kind of like, okay, stay where you are, no one move, right? So I was kind of standing over here. Alan was around like a wall over here. And we weren't going to get near each other because they'd been winning. So you know, we're not going to take a chance on ruining the mojo on the ice. And that last second and a half, I just took off and ran around the wall and jumped on top of Alan. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, we were like, oh, my God, this is happening. And then the game ended. We looked. We're about to go on the air. And his daughter and son were right there. And he grabbed them and was crying. And I was like, that tough dude right there, this is what it all means. That dude right there is the <laughs> toughest guy I know in tears with his kids because he got to share that moment. So, and, and as we looked down and, you know, probably 33% of the arena, if not more, was Caps fans and seeing peep guys hugging and jumping up and down whenever I would doubt, like, what do I do for a living? I'm a sportscaster. You look around and you go, well, this is important. It's important to a lot of people. So I don't know if anything in my life will professionally will ever top being a part of that run. And I'm lucky enough, you see over my shoulder, deep into the night that night, after the Caps had won, I took advantage of the players who probably had a few too many and they let me pick it up. And it was, uh, that was a hell of a night. Those were my icebreakers. I'm Alexis Downey. Tune in next time for more coverage of the NHL.